August 19th will be the 10th anniversary of the death of Sergio Vieira de Mello, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and Special Representative in Iraq. Sergio, considered by many to be the most suitable successor to Kofi Annan, was a victim of the terrorist attack in Baghdad, the first attack on the United Nations since its founding. There were 21 other casualties and more than 200 injured. Sergio had an extensive and intense career, a reflection of the most resonant episodes of the past 40 years. Among the memorable moments were his mediation after the Middle East hostilities in 1982, the repatriation of 400,000 Cambodian refugees in the 90s, and his efforts to negotiate an end to the slaughter in Bosnia. He was privileged to undertake the most difficult and successful experiences of the UN leadership, together with the Timorese patriots, the independence process in Timor-Leste. At the time of his death, Sergio held the top UN human rights job, the position many call the conscience of the world. In light of all this, the passivity of the international community after an attack of these dimensions is beyond comprehension. What was expected should have been a thorough investigation surrounding the events leading to the bombing, but this was not the case. In fact, whatever were found were ignored or undermined. One known detainee, Saeed Abdelaziz Mahmoud, willing to disclose his participation, was executed. Surprisingly, not even the UN came forth to construct an institutional message of repudiation to this violence. Kofi Annan himself delivered only diplomatic platitudes during his formal functions, but never promoted a formal institutional rejection of the attack. Had he done so, it would have helped to promote worldwide consciousness of this truly unacceptable act of violence. The truth is that, 10 years later, all of us still do not know the exact circumstances of the attack, the motives of the perpetrators, and the criminal and moral responsibility that bear those who enable the attack as a starting point for healing wounds. We are uninterested in tributes. What we all hope is, first, the truth, thoroughly, and the strong commitment of the organization to find it out. Our mission in Iraq was not humanitarian, it was a political mission. I was Sergio Vieira de Melo's partner at the time of the attack. Our relationship began under great duress and adversity during the early years of the reconstruction of Timor-Leste. I also accompanied him when he received his appointment in New York for human rights, and time later, Iraq. Beyond the ghost of hatred and tragedy that filled the sky over Baghdad, our relationship was strengthened, and we journeyed together intensely the last moments of his existence. The day of the attack, I was a few meters from Sergio when the bomb exploded. I found him in the rubble. Far from delving into the details, it is important for me to honor our relationship, our joint projects, and above all, to help to clarify the cause, to achieve a true and thorough investigation. My intention is to be a link based on everything we lived, and that it was me who survived. It was not just the terrorists who tore my life, but all who attempted to distort and rewrite the story of Sergio, our relationship, and the absurd abandonment in which he died. In the solemn silence in which was buried the attack, there is one voice that can rise to claim Sergio's history, that of Brazil, his country. Celso Morin, current Brazilian defense minister, and for a decade in foreign affairs, has taken the initial step. For the first time, he questions. I'm not prone to conspiracy theories, but one cannot recall the episode without wondering if the weak point, from the perspective of security, was not deliberately weakened perhaps to deflect possible attacks from the most sought-after target, the U.S. military administration. It is striking that this reflection comes from diplomacy 10 years later. Two months before the attack, Sergio, worried, had told him that the situation in Iraq was dramatic, and with the help of Brazil, he could push for a multilateral dimension. A decade later, I am sure this is finally the beginning. And a new era of transparency could not take place, but only from Brazil itself. I say this now from my deep love for Sergio and from my conviction to emphasize the struggle he embodied in a world that so much needs it and yet persists in denying it.